Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the channel. Now in today's video we're going to be doing a locomotive fleet uh, review. So this video we're going to be, I'm going to be showing you all the locomotives that I have in my uh, fleet uh, currently and uh, as well as that I'm also going to um, discuss at the end of the video uh, which ones I would like to buy um, in the future. So uh, anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and uh, before we get into it, if you haven't already, then please hit the subscribe button, click on the little notifications bell and press all, and uh, share the video and channel with anyone who you think would be interested, and feel free to leave a like as well. Anyways, let's get into the video. Alright, so uh, starting off, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, start off with what I brought first to what I brought recently. So, uh, to start this video off, here we have my Hornby 060 Jinty in the uh, Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway uh, livery. I believe that's what it's called anyways. Um, this locomotive was my first uh, locomotive that I ever owned. Uh, this is the locomotive that came in the train set that I brought, the Hornby Somerset Bell train set. And um, this locomotive has done many, many uh, miles under its belt. and. Um, I haven't run this one in quite a long time uh, due to the fact that it does not have a Dakota. It's in uh, another one of my locomotives, which I'll show you um, soon. So uh, this one um, I haven't run in a while. Uh, I've fitted uh, KD couplers to it um, as I plan to add KD couplers to the rest of my uh, UK stuff. So um, that way I can run um, everything with KD couplers, just keep them all the same. But, uh, this is my first locomotive that I've ever owned, uh, it's one of my favourites and uh, I would like to get this one running uh, one day. Okay, so uh, next locomotive in the fleet is my Hornby uh, Canadonian Railways 040, uh, I believe it's a pug uh, style locomotive, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and uh, this is my second locomotive that I ever brought and um, this one I really really wanted. and. Uh, it took a while for me to get this one, as um, when I got it, uh, the hobby shop had it in stock, although um, it needed a Dakota fitted. Now these don't come with a uh, Dakota pin, so it doesn't come with an 8 pin or a 21 pin. Um, so I had to get this one hard wire fitted, and uh, the guy that usually does that at the shop that I brought it from um, doesn't do it often, so I had to wait, I think it was like 6 weeks, um, until I could get this locomotive. and. Uh, Again, just like the Hornby 060, uh, it's had a lot of miles put under its belt. Um, it's a good locomotive, uh, it's actually quite well weighted for its um, size. And um, this one, what I plan to do with it is um, I plan to uh, do a full respray on it. So I want to paint this one into um, British Rail lined black. I think that would be quite nice. And uh, this particular locomotive is uh, DCC fitted. Uh, and it uses a um, Digitrax DH126P, uh, uh, I think it's called, uh, Dakota. Uh, it's an 8 pin Dakota. Um, I've had to hard wire fit this one. Now, uh, the Dakota that's in it now wasn't the original one. Uh, the original one uh, was a Hornby Dakota, um, 8 pin Dakota that is. Um, and what actually happened was uh, I was running this and uh, Actually, it actually derailed on some point work and um, fried the Dakota. So um, this one was actually out of action for a while. So um, that's why it has a uh, different Dakota. But uh, it's a good locomotive and um, one that I uh, really, really like. Okay, so uh, next up in the fleet is my Powerline T-Class. Uh, this is the first um, Australian uh, locomotive I ever brought. Um, this is T366 in the V-Line orange and grey livery. Uh, this is a model that I really, really wanted. Um, and uh, as I said, this was the first uh, Australian model that I um, ever brought. Now, when I got into model railways, I always knew of the existence of Australian model railways, just didn't know any of the brands. Um, and when I discovered Powerline, I figured this one of these T classes is one that I really, really wanted to get. So uh, this is um, this one I brought from Train World in um, Brighton, 
and uh, this one was actually DC when I got it. Um, it's now been uh, converted to DCC. Um, it has a uh, NCEDA-SR uh, decoder. Uh, this one had to be hardwire fitted. Um, I wasn't brave enough to do it myself. That's why I sent it down to the guys at Train World to, to do it for me. And uh, this particular model has been uh, weathered by me. Um, this is actually my first ever locomotive uh, weathering attempt. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Uh, I've also uh, tinted the headlights with um, a bit of yellow paint. I don't know how well you can see that. Yeah, just there like that. Um, just to make them look a bit more realistic. Um, they came with like that really bright, like white, blue sort of colour, which doesn't look very realistic. But uh, yeah, um, I've also added KD knuckle couplings. Um, the model came with plastic couplings, which uh, broke very early on. I remember, um, I think it was like, either the third or fourth day of ownership um, the coupler on um, this long end here actually broke so I um, had to run it uh, long end leading uh, with the carriages coupled up to this end but uh, it's a good loco and um, it's done a lot of um, miles since I brought it um, I've put this locomotive through its paces and um, it's been running absolutely fine ever since so uh, that is my Powerline T class Okay, so uh, next locomotive up in the fleet is my Lima B-Class. Uh, this particular one is B84 in the all-orange uh, V-Line livery. Now, uh, this locomotive is a limited edition run that uh, Lima did back in the day. And um, I believe they only did, I think it was 300 of these. Um, not just in this livery, but they also did it in the Vic Rail Teacup livery and the West Coast uh, Railways livery. Um, I can't remember from the top of my head which number I got but I'll probably put it on the bottom of the screen out of how many ever it was that they did so um, yeah this is a nice limited edition model now uh, this model has had a little bit of work done to it since I've got it uh, I fitted KD knuckle couplings um, I've also chopped the fuel tank balance off as that's not prototypical for this model and uh, it's had a uh, weathering job done by me uh, not the best weathering job in the world I would uh, admit. Um, I've also fitted the driver as you can see in the cab there um, and a uh, basically a mock-up of a uh, control stand and uh, overall it's a you know decent model and um, the fact that it's limited edition I uh, couldn't go past it. Now um, I do plan to do some work to this particular model. Um, I should also point out that this locomotive is DCC fitted uh, has a Hornby 4 pin decoder and the decoder that's in this actually came out of the um, 060 that I showed at the start so um, that's how I was able to run this one on DCC so uh, the work that I plan to do to this model is I want to uh, do a full strip down and uh, respray as uh, this particular livery is not actually correct for the period that I model um, B84 was uh, resprayed into the uh, orange and grey livery I think it was about 1986, 1987. So um, this particular livery is not correct for the period that I model. Um, I model 1988 and 1992. So um, what I want to do is I do a full strip down and uh, respray with this model. Um, I'll still keep the original number B84, and uh, as well as respraying the body, I would also like to um, do. A uh, chassis conversion. Um, it still has the Lima mech and a chassis. Um, I would like to fit a uh, all-wheel drive and um, hopefully all-wheel all -wheel pickup uh, mechanism. Um, I've been told that the uh, Athern uh, SD7 slash SD9 uh, mech will fit in this just fine, as well as a um, Proto 2000 mech um, should also fit just fine. So uh, that is something I would like to do with this model um, in the future. But uh, for now, I'll keep it as is. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty decent model. Um, I usually use this uh, locomotive for hauling uh, passenger trains on the layout. As, um, it's not exactly strong enough to pull some of the freight trains. So uh, this one is mainly restricted to um, passenger workings on the layout. Um, I've taken it to the club once and um, it did all right at the club. Had it behind a uh, passenger train and uh, seemed to be running around the club layout with no issues. 
Um, so overall, it's a decent model for its age, and um, yeah, this one will uh, be subject to some work eventually. Okay, so next up is my Oscision G-Class. This particular one is G515 in the V-Line orange and grey livery. Now, I picked this model up at the 2023 Sandown Model Railway Exhibition. Uh, this model um, has been one of the most reliable uh, locomotives that I have owned. Um, it's also the heaviest as well, so um, it pulls... Uh, the big heavy freight trains that I like to run on this layer as well as at the club layer. Oh, this particular model uh, is the DC model when I brought it. Um, although I have fitted a uh, ESU uh, Loc Pilot version 5 uh, decoder to it, uh, 21 pin decoder that is, uh, to ensure smooth running. Uh, I've had no issues with the decoder yet, and um, quite frankly, I quite like that decoder. Um, it's a good price and uh, it works well in, in this model. So uh, one thing I did have to do was uh, glue both of these horns on the tops uh, back on as uh, I don't know what it is with the G-Class but the horns um, they seem to be glued in with a, uh, like a semi sort of flexible plastic and uh, now I'm not the only one who's complaining about this um, I've heard a lot of other people have complained about that so uh, a bit of super glue and um, you're all good so uh, this locomotive um, is one of my favourites and uh, it was one of the first big diesel locomotives that I um, had brought for the layout and one thing I really wanted was a, uh, a nice big diesel and uh, well that's what I got. It's also the most detailed locomotive um, that I own as well and uh, yeah it's very very nice and uh, this locomotive runs really well um, now that I've um, done all the track work um, on the layout and this, act this locomotive was actually the reason why I've done all that track work and um, now that I've done it, I can actually you know run it properly, which I'm very very happy about. So uh, this locomotive will eventually get weathered by me, and uh, maybe I might make a video on it. Maybe I won't. We'll see. But uh, yeah, that's my G class. So uh, on to the next loco. Okay, so uh, last but not least is the, uh, the latest acquisition um, in the locomotive fleet. This is my Oscision C-Class diesel locomotive. Uh, this particular one is C501 George Brown in the orange and grey livery. Uh, this locomotive, um, just like the G-Class, has been fitted with a uh, ESU uh, version 5 uh, Loc Pilot decoder to ensure smooth running. And uh, not had any issues with that uh, decoder as as of yet, although um, I did have one scare um, with the Dakota, which was when I was at the club once. Um, I hadn't realised that uh, the locomotive was on a uh, set of points and it was shorting out. Um, I saw a bit of smoke coming from the top there, so I quickly took the locomotive off the layout, let it cool down, and uh, checked that it's still working. And uh, touch wood, it still is. Thankfully, um, I have heard. Um, with the decoders that come in the DCC sound uh, models, um, they they have had a few issues. Um, in fact, one club member um, at my club has actually had to buy a whole new C class uh, because of it. But um, taking a look at my model, um, details great, it runs great, and um, again, just like the G class, I wanted a uh, a nice big diesel uh, loco for the layout. Um, this one does um, the heavy haul uh, freight trains as well as the occasional passenger service as um, I've seen photos of C-classes running uh, revenue V-line services um, back in the day. Um, it's a nice model and uh, it's a good one to have in the fleet. And just like the G-class, this one will also get weathered by me. Alright, so uh, that's all the uh, locomotives uh, that I own currently and um, I do plan to get a few more um, just quickly I'm going to share with you guys the ones that I want to buy um, in the future 
So uh, looking at Ossetian, um, Ossetian are doing a uh, rerun of the uh, V-Line A class, so um, I definitely want to get my hands on one of those. Um, Ossetian are also doing the uh, S class as well, and uh, another company called um, Trainorama is also doing the S class, which um, I'll probably end up getting the Trainorama one um, before the Ossetian one, as uh, the Trainorama one is supposed to come out this year. Um, supposedly, so um, there's those two locomotives. Um, I would also like to buy uh, an X class um, for the layout. Um, Ossetian have done X class, but uh, it's a bit difficult to get a hold of now, as um, it's been sold out for a while. Um, I would like to buy a third series X class as well. Um, again, uh, there's a few manufacturers that have made one, but uh, they're difficult to get a hold of. Um, I would also like to get a V-Line N class, again, they, those have been made by Ossision and um, those have been sold out for quite some time and are very difficult to get a hold of and the ones that usually are for sale are demanding ridiculous money. So um, there's a fair few locomotives that I uh, would like to buy um, in the future, um, in fact with my uh, birthday coming up um, in less than a month's time. Um, I'll definitely be buying myself a uh, new locomotive. Uh, no idea what locomotive that will be. Um, I guess we'll find out when the time comes. But uh, anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, of course, let me know your thoughts um, in the comments section below. And um, hopefully uh, this year we can see the locomotive uh, fleet increase. as uh, That will be quite nice. And uh, yeah, anyways... Thank you all for watching and um, I'll see you all in my next video. So take care, stay safe, have a nice day. Bye everyone.